So we come to number eight of the of the 18 form Qigong sequence, gazing at the moon, or um, with the motion it's turn, turn to gaze at the moon, and we heard it called, again, a lot of similar names within Pacific forms. Um, we've got the eight brocades in the 18 form Qigong sequence added on and a nine form at the end. Well, learn from the Himalayas. So basically 35 in all. So with this eight, added to the eight. So this is like the 16th of the 35. You can do this singly or separately because we're going right into the breath. That's the most important thing. Um, again, they're all linked to organs uh, within the traditional form. Uh, this one within the traditional form is linked to the spleen, bladder, pericardium, which is like the heart lining, and the, gall the gallbladder, the spleen, liver, um, but I'm a great believer it will help every organ, cell, sinew of the body. We're not going down the traditional route. Specifically within each move, they benefit each organ, um, which is, which is, you know, I've done that and it does, because uh, you focus on that organ. You know, a lot of the bending ones will naturally hit, hit the kidneys, opening up the chest ones will hit all the organs in the chest, etc. But, um, they will vary sometimes because there's so many different forms and uh, trials of thought. So again, I will say that whatever you focus on, you move towards. So if you focus on the meridian, electromagnetic river, um, or nadi, meridian, whatever you want to call them, them organs and them emotions, them organs will be, will be specific to what you're focusing on. So it doesn't have to be completely set like the form. This is this organ, this is this motion, exactly like this in this sequence. Um, that's why I'm playing around with them because it's just movement, it's just mind candy, just playing around with them. And anything breast synchronized movement, vinyasa in Sanskrit, is good. Um, and that will reach every single organ, cell, sinew of the body, believe me. Every inch, square inch of tissue that will reach in a beneficial way. So, gazing at the moon uh, is a nice one. But what we're going to do is start with the breathing. So the most important thing, we go down the Pilates, yogic and hypnotic responses with the breath. So with this, a bit of a mixture of breath, um, but they're just words. Forget them. Zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals. We straight away come into that Pilates setup. If you want to get an awareness before we start, thumb here. We're going to find the beeline from the hip all the way around. We touch there. That's the beeline in the body, bikini line, belt line, whatever you want to call that. And that's the end of the pelvic floor, okay? And that links onto our corset, our powerhouse, our girdle, strength from there, three layers deep, which all segmentally stabilizing our spine, the transverse abdominus. So this is where they both attach, and they segmentally stabilize the spine, they go together. If you come to that beeline again and you just cough or sneeze, <coughs> you find corset comes on and the pelvic floor engages, okay? So you can be safe in the knowledge, they go together. But we're going to do it segmentally. We're going to zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals right now. You're going to breathe in through the nose and exhale through pursed lips. Okay. And as you do that, just follow that journey all the way out through the nose. I'll turn that light on. Okay. And just follow that journey all the way out. Okay, that's a bit bright. Breathing through the nose and exhaling through pursed lips. So you're sort of blowing out a candle as you zip up pelvic floor and scoop out your abdominals. That's going to naturally help us breathe into these lower lobes and lungs, into costals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. Okay, it's what we call lateral classic breathing. It helps you use the pelvic floor and the corset muscle, three layers deep, the transverse dom uh, dominus the corset muscle in the most efficient manner, help you breathe anywhere but the belly button, help you breathe into these lower lobes of lungs, into costals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. Okay, it's all segmentally stabilizing the spine. Keep breathing into them fish gills, 3D style, organ deep, cell deep, even bone marrow deep, into these fish gills, 3D style, into these lower lobes of lungs, anywhere but the stomach, so someone's opening an umbrella inside your rib cage and letting go, or someone's just pushing out from inside your ribs and letting go. That lovely, free, expansive breath. Okay, 
breathing through the nose and exhaling through pursed lips. So if you're sort of blowing out through a candle through pursed lips, that actually works like a cough or a sneeze again, naturally helps you zip up pelvic floor and skip any abdominals without even trying or trying not to try. Now again, as we go down the yogic path, we close the mouth, same deal though, zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals, breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. That smaller filter through the nose will help us lengthen the whole wheel cycle. So that makes that a little bit more yogic in a way, more cleansing breath. That smaller filter through the nose helps us lengthen the whole wheel cycle of the breath, which helps us get into our asanas, our moves like Qigong moves like here, in a more efficient, relaxed, easy manner, okay? And the breath is our friend, it's the bridge between the mind and the body, it's our gauge. Do you see how deeply relaxed we get into these moves and postures in a minute? Now, that's become more yogic, but what we're gonna do is go a little bit more hypnotic with that out breath. So we're gonna take our mind to that out breath and you will naturally feel that wants to fall longer than the in breath. So simply allow that to happen without even trying or trying not to try. Allow that to happen. And then we're gonna consciously take our mind to that out breath. And when you consciously take your mind to that out breath, rather than that breath breathe you, you're gonna breathe that out breath. You're gonna consciously take your mind to that out breath and elongate it consciously. Quadruplet, doublet, triplet, the out breath. Make it longer than the in breath. Okay, the in breath is conscious thought, the out breath is subconscious thought. So by extending the out breath longer than the in breath, we're encouraging sleep, digestion, rest, and relaxation, all on that lovely, elongated out breath. Okay, that's gonna help benefit the parasympathetic nervous system, which helps with sleep, digestion, rest, and relaxation. Even cellular communication is being benefited by simply elongating the out-breath longer than the in-breath. It's helping organ function, that process of elimination and assimilation, all in the out-breath. That health and renewal, all the housekeeping parts of the body you don't have to think about, which naturally happen, will be benefited in a more relaxed manner. The in breath conscious thought, the out breath is subconscious thought. So allow that simplicity to relax the mind, safe in the knowledge that's relaxing you deeper and deeper. So again, we can stick with that, that little mix of breath, or if you want to make it slightly more yogically, more challenging, more advanced breath, you can go to Ujjayi breath, victorious breath in Sanskrit, we grip at the esophagus, and it's to help us lengthen the whole wheel cycle again for this narrower channel, the esophagus. So if you're breathing, you'll get this sound. It's a shoulders down, so we'll not come up, and it's a as that breath rolls in and rolls out, you hear that sound, it's a And an exhale. That soft, silky, whistling Ujjayi breath, victorious breath in Sanskrit, seashore breathing. If you can't get it, don't worry. Just carry on breathing. You're maybe not ready for it yet. If you get this, then that'll help us lengthen the whole wheel cycle again, the breath, especially the out breath. Help us stimulate the thyroid, thyroid gland, which helps with weight control, etc. Help us build the heat in the body, help us fan the fire to burn all the toxins in the body. Ujjayi breath, victorious breath, seashore breath. That soft, silky, whistling, raspy sound from the back of the throat gives the mind something to focus on within the form, the posture, the movement. Okay, it's natural focusing movement we use in everyday life sometimes. Trying to do a fine motor skill like bang an owl in or thread a needle. Something like that. We're just overemphasizing that sound. It gives the mind something to focus on. And here, as it weaves that tapestry of relaxation, every single organ cell in the body, every square inch of tissue in the body at will. 
that relaxation, just soaking in like ink through blotting paper into every single organ, cell, sinew of the body. Would you do a new dry breath or not? That'd be doing that. So it's very similar to Ashtanga yoga breath. A slight difference, but again. So with that, we're gonna go to Vinyasa, breath synchronized motion. Now again, gaze at the moon's a nice one. We're ringing up the tension from the spine. From here, bring your hands up, shoulders melt down and towards the body. Sort of near enough in the Setu Tadasana posture, we would drop the shoulders. Gather in, navel towards the spine. Watch for a hyper extension of the back. Keep the spine neutral. Gather in from that corset, zip up in the hollow. With the breathing, and just exhale, let the breath go. I'm doing a Virjo breath, if you can't get that, just do the elongated out breath as normal, like I've been doing it, in, in and out through the nose. If you get the Ujjo breath, it sound like this. You can look up, that's gonna, through Ajna, but don't quite extend the neck, look up through Ajna, the brow chakra there. Otherwise, just keep your gaze forward. But again, don't overextend the neck. Just keep that shoulders over hips, head over shoulders, looking up for the eyebrows or not. Get any tension here. If you're overactive like me and these upper traps, allow these shoulders to drop. Now again, if you want to bring the feet in, you have a little bit of a pivot, totally optional. Gather in, zip up and hollow, same deal. Same deal, breathe in. On the toe and pivot. There's a tiny pivot that has saved the knees so you're not sort of jamming against the knees. And just elongate the out breath for as long as you like and start again. Bringing out all that tension from the spine. Okay, imagine you've got a imagine you've got a dirty cloth and you're wringing out all the tension or wringing out a dirty cloth in a stream. Okay, that's us wringing out all the tension from our spine. Okay, if you get any tension in your shoulders, just drop them there and then start again. Gazing at the moon, really nice one. Uh, yeah, that was number eight of the 18 form Qigong sequence, number 18 in the whole 35, the three forms together. We've got the pushing palms next. Okay, but that was gazing at the moon. Lovely, bang. Just elongate that out breath, long, be long. 